Uh, I've been using nitrosol for about seven years. Uh, approximately 10 years I've been using nitrosol. I've been using nitrosol for 15 years now. I've been using nitrosol uh, for the period of probably something like 10 years now. We've been using nitrosol for 25 years now. I have been using nitrosol for 25 years. I've been using nitrosol liquid fertiliser for 40 years. My purpose is to grow my cows and my, uh, my stock as quick as I can and achieve the best results. So that's what I'm looking to do. And, and, I, and I would say that that's uh, what nitrosol has done. It's helped me to achieve the level that I've got to. Well, it's very easy to store. Um, because it's organic, it's perfectly safe. So if, uh, if it should spill or it, it doesn't do any harm at all, um, it's easy to manage. Um, it's easy to, to put on, uh, to actually mix it and to apply it. Um, so, and it can be put on at any time of the year, as long as you can get over the property. Uh, in the old days, when I was using a, a more traditional fertiliser, I was particularly worried about the fact that I had a lack of earthworms. Uh, and since shifting to nitrosol, the earthworm count has risen significantly. And because of that, you're obviously going to have much more healthy plants. And it also gives the plants the ability to drop their root system down further into the ground so they're able to pull more moisture out of the soil which means that during a period of, of low rainfall like a, a, a drought situation then you are going to have more resilient plants. We had about a four inch topsoil here and a very wet property. Uh, since putting nitrosol on we've got a spade depth of topsoil and we've got worm numbers now that are staggering. Nitrosol sort of suits me, uh, if I could use a term, down to the ground because it um, doesn't cost me a, a big truck to come and put it on. I've been able to, to put it, uh, apply the nitrosol myself through my own equipment and so there's been a huge saving from that point of view and I've only seen good results from it and um, yeah, been very, very, very happy with the product. It is very convenient, very convenient, and it's very economical. Um, you know, a 200 litre drum can do 40 odd acres, and you know, you just look at the grass, it's, and it just keeps producing. I've had a number of comments from my uh, stock agent, who often tells me that, uh, that our stock is sometimes the first to go off to the market, and, uh, and, it's, and I'm definitely receiving excellent weights white grades from the, um, the abattoirs who, who, who take my stock. It was pretty much immediate, um, the first application that I um, put on, um, the, the grass just came away, the whole place just looked different altogether, it, it was really producing what I, what I wanted. I used to have quite a bit of problem with facial eczema, now after shifting to nitrosol, um, I haven't had any facial eczema that I can see in a clinical form at all. My motto is, yeah, I mean, we're putting on good quality product and we're getting good results. You can see it when you tip it out of the drum. I mean, that's what I liked about from other products. I was tipping it out there and it looked like water. I was ringing them up, asking them if they'd stirred it properly in the factory, could they come and get it? Because it just looked like a real watery brew. And I got this stuff, it's like tipping out golden syrup, you know, and it looks good. So, I mean, that's why it's doing good. And then it makes, it's obviously made my grass a lot sweeter because the cows are mowing it down like a lawnmower, you know? They're not worrying about and picking at things, they're just eating the whole lot. And it's coming back good. There's been a shift of emphasis um, towards more uh, biodynamic um, fertilizers and that for the land. I mean, we, yeah, with normal fertilizer, we've found that uh, there's less and less earthworms and more people probably will be turning back and using a product like this so you're getting your earthworm populations back up and getting the balance of your um, the soil right so you're growing he healthy vegetables. Just drive around with your tractor, eh? spraying out the back, just make sure it's not too windy because you don't want to be fertilising the neighbour. Yeah, and uh, just get it on there and it's good stuff because you can put it on even when it's pouring down with rain and it's still going to stick to the grass. So. Um, a lot of other products are used, that's the hard thing. It's got to have the perfect conditions and, and, and in farming in New Zealand, geez, getting the perfect condition to put your spray on, you might never get it on. Yeah, that's the key to it, eh? But um, 
My father, he puts it on by helicopter. That's the same stuff. That's where I learnt about the product. Yeah, okay. he's been using it for years. So, and um, his grass is as high as the fence. Really? Yeah, that thick. We got 300 cows on 200 acres, and they can't. It's not enough to eat it. Yeah, really? yeah. So, do well, you add it to our pesticides when we're spraying regularly? So there's no extra time in putting the uh, product on, and it sort of it acts like a uh, sticker as well for our pesticides. So. Um, no, it's, it's easy to apply, you just put it in a spray tank and spray it on. Oh, we're limited to the very um, zero lim vet bills. We don't deal with the vet being organic yeah. too much. Yeah. And the cows, they don't seem to get sick. Well, I've been here a year and a half and I've had no sick ones. Yeah. But that's because that's you know, they looked after, I suppose. The paddocks are ripe for them. No weeds, they're getting everything they need. And they're getting that sleep that they need and fresh water. We're particularly uh, more heavenly heavily nitrogenous fertilisers are used, we often see um, a big leap in spring growth of pasture, but the pasture is lacking in magnesium and calcium, and therefore we start to see some of the metabolic disorders of, of dairy cows come into play. Apart from that, um, we often observe that on, on nitrosol the stock just grow quickly and we're called out in our veterinary capacity, veterinary capacity much less than we would have been. So it, it's more of a, a case of keeping stock healthy rather than addressing the emergency situation or even uh, slightly unhealthy stock. We no longer have a veterinary bill at all. Our animals uh, have beautiful shiny coats and our milk solids per kilogram the percentage is uh, the highest in the district. Being involved in a veterinary practice myself uh, we, we would far rather keep animals healthy rather than um, have, have them unhealthy and have to face them in, in the emergency situation. So uh, I, I should imagine that, that many people who use it would find a decrease in their veterinary bill. Uh, since switching to the product I've had no veterinary bills or any health problems in my animals at whatsoever. It's, it's the same with people, you know, if, if we build up our bodies and keep ourselves healthy we get less sick than if we let ourselves get run down and don't sleep and especially don't eat properly. I found the coats have been um, a lot shinier, they've been a picture of, of really good health actually. Yes, they've really benefited. Well, they weigh about uh, 850 kilos each, so they need a bit of food, you know. Yeah. That big, mm. yeah. But I think they seem to be very quiet now. Like, I mean, they always were quiet because I spend time with them. But um, they're all asleep by lunchtime, eh? And that's a good sign. And that means your cow's got everything in his diet that he needs. Like, if he's still up wandering around at two o'clock, well, so they've only just—they've all been asleep. They've only got up because we've turned up. Yeah. You know, they'd still be asleep till this afternoon sometime. Really? Yeah. And that's the key. That's—I mean. Uh, a cow that's asleep at 12 o'clock, he's a good happy cow, isn't he? And he's going to put on weight and he's going to produce milk. Well, she is. Before using this product, we found that our pasture was very patchy and open in areas. And since using it, it's definitely increased the volume of grass and the quality of grass. And our weeds have actually diminished as well. See, so yeah, I'm going to cut it next week. I mean, if in late January or early February, I might be able to cut it again, yeah. It's money in the bank, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So I'll be selling it on then. Well, I came across it because for a hobby, I was growing on in a glass house and a shade house, tissue cultured plants. And people would say to me, oh, use zest, oh, use something else, oh, use something else. And I thought I'll give it a study and see. So I went along to the wholesaler to get some seed trays that I needed. And he said, try this, Mary, it's new. It's called nitrosol and it's supposed to have everything in balance and everything natural. Try that in your trial. So I did. I got about five different things and a nothing at all for a control. My nitrosol plants grew at a huge amount faster and were flowering and ready to sell six weeks before anything else, which is huge difference. So I was sold on it. One of the, the biggest reasons I chose this product was that it was an organic product. Um, I think it's very important nowadays. We've, we've always used superphosphates and um, chemical applications like that and we wanted to just go to something that, that's 
uh, better on the environment and obviously with the results to go with it. Well, I, I could sum it up with this. Before that, the most hay they'd ever been able to get off it was 700 bales, right? Last year I made equivalent of 1,800 bales. Really? Yeah. So that's the big jump it's been able to make. And this year I'll, I've tripled it almost, yeah. Well, this year I think I've tripled it. I mean, because I've got this much grass, so I'm gonna ha I can't, it's too much for the cattle to eat. I'm just going to have to wrap it up yeah. into those bales there and hopefully feed it to them over winter or maybe sell some on. Well, yeah. that's what I mean, that's, that's the difference that the fertiliser has made. Yeah. From 700, I think, and then what was happening, the other managers, they were buying it in. You know, and I don't think, if you're obviously not farming your farm right if you have to be buying in, in, in the other feed. Yeah. So this year I'm predicting to get at least 200 wraps out of it. So that's equivalent to 2,000 bales. So that's a big jump from 700, isn't it? It's 1,300 bales difference. But the grass right now is only just starting to, I mean, it takes eight weeks or sort of for you to start noticing. So what I'm noticing now, it's really thickening up. So I'd say by the end of December, we'll be right. Be nice and thick, and ready to go for, for the winter. You know, every rose that I put in, certainly you have to choose the rose for the position. Now these are rugosa roses here. Rugosa roses like sand. They don't mind sea air, they don't mind salt but they struggle if you don't look after them. Right, these were planted only three years ago as little cutback babies, and they were planted with a bucket of nitrosol. Um, puddled in, it's the only product that I know that at planting time that won't burn new forming roots. Nitrosol is uh, so easy to use because you use it with your uh, weed spray and uh, that means that you only have to have one uh, run over the uh, paddocks to do your weeds and fertiliser. I would never go back to the uh, phosphatic fertiliser because there's too uh, many problems with it and uh, health wise as uh, well as uh, uh, growing the grass. If you don't believe me, do a study. Plant one with nitrosol and do one that isn't, and you'll see the difference. We're getting better colour in our product, uh, a lot deeper green, and um, they certainly look, look a lot better, look, look a lot healthier when we're cutting our product. Last year we uh, were embarrassed with grass with 55 head on and made 1,609 bales of hay. If you want healthy vegetables or flowers and that, I mean, uh, this is the product you should be using. I uh, use a uh, wee bit in the garden, but uh, people are saying, well, you know, I've got soil that's a bit rich for, to grow parsnips because they're putting down five roots and uh, I might have to slacken off with the parsnips. And the, uh, <laughs> and the nitrosol. We were getting a lot of um, areas that just weren't doing very well. Um, and the clover, we wanted to promote the clover. And we, we seem to get a lot of ryegrass up here. So um, we found the product really did benefit the clover. A lot of horse trainers try and get the hay from here because it's uh, so good for their horses. We were pretty sceptical uh, in, in the beginning, but once we started using it, um, we found it has very good results and we've kept on using it. I believe since using nitrosol, the overall health of our pasture has increased dramatically and I will definitely be using this product from now on. About four or five days ago, I was working away uh, merrily getting uh, this barn ready to paint and uh, in drove this uh, bloke from down the road and he's got a block down there and he said I've been going past and looking at your grass and he said I'd like to lease the property because I've never seen grass like that before <laughs> so uh, unfortunately I told him about how many cattle he had on and he just stood there in amazement and uh, I told him it wasn't for lease I'm still able-bodied enough to work it myself. I have religiously stuck to nitrosol for all those years and uh, as you can see by the grass that we grow and the cattle that we can graze, uh, I can't find anything better.